Good afternoon YouTube, Trevor here, Summit or Nothing, back out hiking and solo wild camping on Dartmoor. Quite excited today as well because I've got a new tent to try out, the 3F UL Gear Lanshan 2 ultra light budget backpacking tent. It was here this morning so I thought let's go and camp in it. So here we are back by O'Campton camp coming up to Oak Tour or Oaky Tour whatever you want to call it. You might remember we've been in this area a couple of times. The first time we parked here we've done Bellstone, Cosden Beacon, Steepton Tour and then walking back along this track and we walked around Oak Tour, never got to it. So I thought I'd pick that as our camp. So the map shows a little track leading up the side of Oak Tour that passes the river. Hopefully there's a bridge there. I'm trying to keep ahead of these clouds. Get a stomp on Trevor. This tour up here now, that's East Mill Tour. That was on our route when we uh, visited the wonderful underrated Cranmere Pool. Don't know if you've seen that video, it's worth a watch if you haven't. Well, I'm out with me uh, Van Gogh Sherpa backpack today. I think it's a 60 litre, the other one was 50 litre that I usually use. My winter pack tends to be 15 kilos. My new tent weighs in at just over a kilo, which is 750 grams less than my nature hike. And this bag is 750 grams more than my other one. But things fit better in here. It doesn't look so untidy. So that was my logic behind that. Okay, so we're heading up to Oki Tour now. We've got about an hour and 40 minutes till sunset, so got plenty of time to get up there. Set the new tent up, have a run through that, and then have a look around the tour, I guess, before we uh, retire for the night. So at the moment, anyway, Nafe's not able to make it. He wanted to come this time, he really did, but he's got kidney stones, so he's not in a good place. So everyone wish him luck, wish him a speedy recovery. It sounds horrendous. So yeah, my sympathies go out to Nafe. Oh, now look, is that water we didn't have to cross. There's not, the river's there, but there's a massive puddle here. Hmm, not sure about this now. What a nuisance. Might be able to walk up. Looks like a bit of a bank here. If I can get over this, solid there. Just got to get around the worst of it, which we are. We passed it, that wasn't too bad. And we're over. That was all right. As long as it doesn't lash down in the night and strand me there. It's supposed to be dry. There's showers for the end of the afternoon and then from six o'clock onwards it's dry, so we should be all right. Right, my raincoat's on, starting to rain. Brilliant. Hopefully it's just a short shower and it will leave me enough time to put my tent up in a minute. So here we are now, up at Oak Tour. Finally got to see Oak Tour. There looks like plenty of places to sort of set up a camp along here. Let's just go and see the view over the other side here. So that was where me and Nathan walked before, over there, Bellstone. We went down in the valley, across the river over at the Ford, and then up. A massive up as well. It was all in the mist, so we didn't know where we were going, but that is a big climb up to Cosden Beacon right on the top there. Look how hazy it's got, eh? So this is Oak Tour. What a lovely spot. Ooh, does that spot look good enough for a tent? Big enough? Might be quite a good little place right in here, look. Imagine getting a tent in there. It's sometimes the hardest part is trying to find ideal spot to pitch. It's like either too stony or too boggy. I didn't go up in the summit. I didn't know if it would be enough room to set up there. 
don't really want to set it right on the track in case people come through. Come back here a touch. We don't really want to pitch it on loads of shit. Or as uh, Ray Mears, he calls it, scat. Boggy again here. It's quite still. I don't think the wind's coming in tonight. Or the rain. So this might not be wet or windy. Let's make a change. A pleasant change. Right, this to me looks like a good spot. Anywhere here, let's set up. So it's up, just doesn't look very sturdy at the minute. Not entirely sure there's enough pegs with it, what I've done. I've used the stone. I couldn't find anything pointy to stab in the ground. So hopefully that's enough for now. Looking now at the tent, <laughs> sort of bulging at one side. And it looks a little more like the old fashioned tents, doesn't it? We used to have a tent that was like a, a, an apex frame like that. Looks like it could be a bit tighter. Looks a bit saggy around the edges. So I'll order them in a minute. It's a free season. I know it's January at the moment, but it's milder than it has been. It's been a mild winter. I thought it was going to be a cold winter when I first camped up on hair tour and it snowed. And that was, what was that, October? But since then it's not really come to much. On the cards tonight then, I've uh, got another boil in the bag food made by myself. I cooked a massive beef stew the other week and bagged some up, so I'm looking forward to that. Then to keep myself amused, I bought an audio book today, Alan Partridge, Nomad. Read by Alan Partridge, I thought that would be quite good, just to keep us occupied. And then plenty of coffee, hot chocolates, stuff like that, keep warm. Feel the temperature drop already. The sun's gone in behind the hill there. Yep, it's cold all of a sudden. It's Nath's favourite tour, Steeperton up there. It does look quite impressive for me. When I was up there at the end of our day, I thought it was bleak. It had been a misty day. As I said, I've done all this from Bellstone Tour, down the valley, all the way up over to Cosden Beacon. Then from there we walked over, we took in some Stone Circle up here, then Hound Tour. There's a little Hound Tour, then Hound Tour. Neither of them are the Hound Tour that you might know from over at the popular end of Dartmoor. And then from Little Hound Tour, we walked down across up to Steeperton and then wove back in around some tracks, walking past Oak Tour but not taking it in. I don't know if you can see over there, red, red mist in the air, not weird. It's more noticeable by eye than it is for the camera and it's really red. How strange. Right, so I'm in the tent now. As I said, I've got the Sherpa, bigger bag this time. Um, which I thought we could sort of get easy access into, but I thought there were zips at the front so you could get in, but there's not. You have to get in through the top and the bottom. I was just trying to get me inflatable mat out. Trying to make me bed up in here. I'd say it's a uh, high time for a coffee now, wouldn't you? Oh, I want the coffee. Not too bad, me. I thought it felt a bit cold compared to like the nature, right? but it feels more like a tarp with the mesh. Gives you the sense it's a bit colder. Yeah. It's not too bad at the minute. I've um, got in here my stew that I bought. It's still frozen solid. I was hoping that would defrost a bit, so what I've just done is just put it in here with the leftover warm water in the bottom and then put the lid on so hopefully it sort of work towards to frost in it. If not, I have got a boil in the bag. Come for Kenko 3-in-1 today. The beauty of the 3-in-1 coffee is it's got your milk and your sugar. You don't have to bring that. You just have a sachet and you can bring it yourself. I suppose you could make your own up. Coffee, put sugar, coffee mate, put it all in a thing and stir it up and you could probably save yourself some money making your own every time. So maybe that's something I'll look at as well. I'm getting into this hike in Malarkey. Exciting. If you thought the nature hike looked like a lamp with the light on, the lantern certainly does. You'd see that from a distance, wouldn't you? But it's surprisingly warm in there. Now I've stepped out and I can feel the difference. Plus I had the door open then, just the inner, drinking my coffee with the door open. 
Moody old sky tonight, isn't it? I wonder what the moon's doing. I bet it's another full moon every time. It's looking bright over there, isn't it? Like there's some sort of full moon. Watch your space. It'll either rise up or break through in a minute and we'll tell. Anyway, I've put my coffee down somewhere. Can't find it. Just sitting out the door, looking out. It's nice to see out in the evening. What a still evening it is as well. Really still. Don't know what the time it is, must be about six o'clock. Sure, you might roll over in your sleep or fiddle with your nutsack, but walking, and it just doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Raided the fridge while you're supposed to be on a diet, sleepwalking. Took a hammer to a much-loved CD collection, sleepwalking. Found in the spare room with your colleague Philip after your husband let him stay over because he'd had two glasses of wine and was over the limit, even though they were small glasses and he was clearly fine to drive, sleepwalking. Come off it, Cal. So, once again, I'm out, and it's full moon. I think that's every time I've been out on a solo camp, it's been a full moon, just by chance. I haven't chosen these nights because of the lunar activity. Just happened. Just out, having a stroll around in the dark. Seeing who's about is no one around. Go up and have a look at the door. It's actually quite bright tonight, obviously, because of the moon. The first camp of 2019. Who'd have thought it'd be in a Lantern 2? Alright, so this is my room for the night. Not looking too bad, is it? Look at this side though. Yeah, there's all the shit. So I'd pitched the tent side on to the sunrise and the sunset. So the door will open and I'll get the sunrise in the morning. But I'm on a bit of a slope. You have to keep <laughs> sliding down. I'll keep ending up like right up against the door. So in the night I'll probably have this pole on me. Knock the pole out, knock the tent down. But it is roomy in here. It always feels bigger once you put all your stuff out. It's just a load of clutter everywhere, isn't there? I might have to tidy up, see how that makes me feel. I think this is the stillest. I've ever known it, ever, when I've been camping. It's eight o'clock now, that's my tea time. Get me stew out. It's starting to thaw, it's still a bit solid on the inside. Trev's stew, do you like that? Got to try and get it down in there. make sure it's boiling for a fair while to ensure that it's cooked right through piping hot but again it's beef so beef is one of those safe meats you're less likely to get food poisoning it's always a highlight isn't it eating when you're camping right let's take a note of the time usually they recommend 12 minutes i'm going to give it 20 minutes boiling Right, I've switched it off. I kept having to have it just, so it's just barely boiling. And then it feels like it's gonna go out, so I turn it up, then it's over boiling. It's all or nothing with these jet balls. There's not a great deal of room in there. It's definitely cooked, I'd say. Food reviews with Trev from Summit or Nothing. Today's food is a beef stew. Oh, that smells good. Mm. Last time I tipped my food into a bowl and someone said, why don't you just eat it from the package? You don't have to dirt your bowl in. Good tip, sir. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. It'd be the same if I was eating a boil in the bag, I never tip it in a bowl, do I? So, yeah, it made sense. Mm. Just good to have real, f real food out on the trail with you. Boil in the bag's all right, but they get a bit samey, don't they? And they are a bit artificial. And stew is always nicer the second time round. If you have 
stew. We always make enough to have it for two nights. And the second night is a lot tastier. All the bits of swede and potato and carrot just draw all the all the flavours in. Mm. Thank you for watching. Me eat. Sake. What has just happened is I've just filled up a cup of water, measuring out, and uh, just got the thing over all over the places. So there's a whole cup of water in here now to get rid of. It's just what we want. What a tit. It's awkward, isn't it, camping? Uh, there you go. Shit happens. It's 11 o'clock. We've had some sleep. Sort of dozing. Look what's happened here. Look at this fucking thing. I'm just sliding. The thing won't stay still. But no more. Needs doing. Oh, right, that was frustrating. I just thought, right. Maybe to stop me from sliding that way, I'll move my sleeping bag over this side of the tent and everything else. I realised as I moved everything, I shifted everything around there and then moved my sleeping bag and my roll mat back this way. I realised there's this still a massive puddle of water all in there, which I've ended up dragging me sleeping bag through, so that's wet there now, look. So I've ended up putting it all back. Ugh. Annoying. Don't pitch your tent on a hill. Um, I think having the two roll mats, the two mats, it's worked fine when we've been like level ground, but I think on here it's just sort of one is on top of the other sliding. It's not really working as well. So, yeah, you know, pros and cons. Anyway, that's woken me up. So now I'm frustrated. I'm awake. Four AM. Is that weird? Where you sleep for hours and hours and you sort of stir and you think it's time to get up. And you open your eyes and it looks light enough. Morning's on its way. And then it's four o'clock in the morning. You still got another four hours before the sun comes up. I tell you what, it has been absolutely freezing tonight. Coldest I've ever been. My hands are numb. I've got me thermals on, I've got t shirts, jumpers. We've got my sleeping bag, with layers in there as well. It takes the edge off, but it, it is cold. Anyway, just talking. And I'm sleeping. Right. right, it's gone six in the morning. I can't sleep anymore. There's quite a lot of moisture in the inside in here. So quite condensation -y. What you'd have thought with the mesh, maybe it wouldn't have been, but it is, alright? Probably not a winter tent. I probably won't bring it out again now till spring, but it'd be good to test it in some winds. You can see the tent is touching here, across the ridge, and down the bottom here. So it hasn't been sort of pulled tight as I'd liked. Had it been raining, that might have been an issue. Get up and have a look up at the tour this morning in this mist. It shouldn't hinder my journey home too bad. All I've got to do is follow a track down to the road and then stick to the road all the way back. That should be okay. There's thick fog today. Hopefully it'll thin out when the sun starts rising in a minute. The sun might burn it away. I wanted to see that low ground mist. But no, it comes in like this, but you know, it might move yet. Fingers crossed, but still, me on my own. It's peaceful, it's tranquil. It's my third time out on my own, and it's eerie, but it's not scary, you know. It's okay, so it's a long, cold night, and the nights are long when you're camping. It takes you longer to get to sleep. You don't sleep as soundly as you would. You're constantly cold, you're constantly uncomfortable. You're waiting for the morning hours, but it's liberating. 
away from all your creature comforts, away from the stress and chaos of the modern world. So anyways, eight o'clock in the morning, it's dawn on Dartmoor. I'm gonna go pack up a tent. Well, there you go. That was a night on Oki Tour, or Oak Tour, I don't know, Oki Tour. Let's call it Oki Tour. And a beautiful morning. Now the trek back to the car, and that's it. So as always, thank you for joining me. And more importantly, if you haven't already, subscribe for more outdoors, wild camping, backpacking, hiking, mountains, coastal walks. Variety is the spice of life. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.